Fort Knox and EC3. Again, all those will be on a one-hour delay due to ice. Western Kentucky University urges everyone to use their best judgment if you're traveling in areas where ice is possible. In a recent session of the Barron County Grand Jury has returned several indictments. 61-year-old Karen William Fox and 53-year-old Joseph Congine, both of Glasgow, were each indicted on one count of receiving stolen property, $500 or more, but less than $10,000. Congine was indicted on two additional counts, possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. 46-year-old Christopher Burroughs of Glasgow was indicted on five counts, possession of a controlled substance, tampering with physical evidence, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, drug paraphernalia, and possession of marijuana. 46-year-old Alicia Bunch of Cave City was indicted on five counts, possession of a controlled substance, tampering with physical evidence, drug paraphernalia, resisting arrest, and DUI. 34-year-old Stephen Lashley Keene of Glasgow was indicted on seven counts, possession of a controlled substance drug, paraphernalia, DUI, possession of marijuana, no license, possession of open alcohol container in a motor vehicle, and no insurance card. Bail was set at $2,500. 28-year-old Marissa Stutzman of Smith's Grove was indicted on three counts, possession of synthetic drugs, second or subsequent offense, drug paraphernalia, and public intoxication. Remember, an indictment's an accusation only, and all individuals should be considered as innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law. And when no one claims ownership, well, then everyone is charged. Officer Corbin saw a red car pass him heading towards Walmart in Glasgow. And according to the citation, the driver was looking ahead with a dead stare. Her hands appeared to be locked on the steering wheel, and the driver's seat appeared to be moved up very close to the steering wheel. Based on Officer Corbin's training and experience, this is behavior that would indicate something illegal, possibly a DUI. He pulled out behind the 07 Ford Focus and noticed the vehicle sway from the fog line to the center line three times, so he turned on his lights and made a traffic stop. The driver, 32-year-old Elizabeth Rayner of Glasgow, had her license but no proof of insurance. Officer Corbin said he noticed the smell of marijuana. When asked if there was anything illegal in the car, Rayner gave a gave the police a blunt, according to the citation, to ensure there were no other illegal drugs inside the vehicle, the passengers were asked to get out. In the back floorboard, officers found a piece of a plastic baggie and a white crystal substance spread out in the floorboard. Later, field tested positive for meth. A glass pipe was found underneath the seat. No one claimed ownership of the meth or the pipe, so all the occupants in the car were charged with it. 30-year-old Timothy Cloyd of Cave City, 30-year-old John Adwell of Smith's Grove, along with Rayner, were charged with possession of a controlled substance, drug paraphernalia, and tampering with physical evidence. Rayner was additionally charged with careless driving, failure to produce insurance card, and possession of marijuana. Sergeant Jesse Barton with Glasgow Police assisted at the scene. All three were taken to and lodged in the Barron County Detention Center. A new fire truck and moving forward with the needle exchange program are two of the items on the agenda for tonight's Glasgow City Council meeting. After a meeting last week, the Public Safety Committee of the City Council will recommend to the full council the city immediately buy a new fire truck for the Glasgow Fire Department. Increasing maintenance costs and aging inventory are among the reasons for the need. The availability of a demo truck from Ferrera, a company that builds fire trucks, will save the city We'll save the 300-plus day wait for a new one, and we'll save thousands in cost. Already approved by the Barron Fiscal Court, the Glasgow City Council is expected to approve the measure at tonight's meeting to move forward with the needle exchange program. Once approved by the city, it's then up to the Barron River Health Department to move forward with the program. You can watch tonight's live stream online at watchwclu.com and also on WCLU Radio's Facebook page beginning at 7 p.m. Right now it's 6.13 a.m. on this Monday morning, a very chilly 30 degrees. Hi, I'm Fred Parrish here at Parrish Carpet in Glasgow, Kentucky. My parents started this business over 50 years ago, so we know flooring here at Parrish Carpet. We have a large showroom and a big selection in stock. We do custom binding and we do free estimates. We've served a lot of people in the 50 plus years and we'd like to thank each and every one of you so if you have a flooring need, come see us at Parish Carpet. TJ Regional Health offers a vast array of medical services in our community. The TJ Health Pavilion is home to over 35 family and specialty physicians, outpatient services center, the TJ Urgent Care, and the TJ Pavilion Pharmacy. The TJ Health Cave City Clinic is a walk-in medical care facility providing care seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Stop by and visit one of our locations today.
In more local news, well, if you're in the market to buy some bison, well, you're in luck. The Kentucky Department of Parks is accepting bids on six bison at the Big Bone Lick State Park Historic Site in Union, Kentucky. The bison are being sold in three groups of two. The department's accepting sealed bids on the three lots through noon on February the 19th. For questions or if you want to see the bison, you can contact Paul Simpson at the park in, Bo- in Boone County, 859-384-3522. Or you can email paul.simpson at ky.gov. The Kentucky Department of Parks sealed bids will be taken care of John Ballard, 2 Hudson Hollow, Unit 1, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40601. Miller Slaughter, a management consultant with the Small Business Development Center at Western Kentucky University, will be at the glasgow Barron County Chamber of Commerce next Tuesday from 10 to 2, providing free small business consultations. The mission of the... Small Business Development Consultant is to provide confidential one-on-one counseling at no charge for area business owners and those who may want to start their own small business. WKU Small Business Development Center is committed to helping small business and entrepreneurs in the area for the past 30 years. Their highly trained staff has been assisting small businesses in South Central Kentucky with starting, financing, and growing their businesses. To schedule your appointment, you can contact the chamber 270-651-3161. And a bill aimed at strengthening the Americans with Disabilities Act may not be what it seems. The U.S. House could vote this week on the ADA Education and Reform Act of 2017, which would give businesses accused of not complying with the law a grace period to fix alleged infractions on their properties before they are subject to litigation. Proponents claim it will curb frivolous lawsuits, but Marilyn Golden with the Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund argues most lawsuits filed under the ADA are not about money, but instead well-intentioned efforts to make buildings more accessible. If this bill passed, it would be very, very damaging for the civil rights of people with disabilities. It would mean businesses had no incentive to comply voluntarily with the law, businesses could just take a wait-and-see attitude. The ADA enforcement essentially relies on people with disabilities challenging violations. Golden says the legislation would complicate the complaint process and greatly lengthen the time it takes to bring a business into compliance. The House could vote on the bill as early as Wednesday. The ADA has been a law for 28 years, which Golden says means businesses have had ample time to understand the law's requirements and to comply with them. She contends it's not an onerous process. Right in the law, it says it means easily accomplishable and able to be carried out without much difficulty or expense. So whatever is cheap and easy for them, in a sense. She adds that while it's an issue that many, not, that many may not impact people with disabilities now, it very well could in the future. As our average age gets older, more and more people will be hampered or excluded by the barriers in buildings that just may be left in place because of this bill. Opponents also note the bill was not crafted with con- with consultation of the disability rights community. With WCLU Local News, I'm Angela Briggs. It's 618 a.m. on this marvelous Monday morning, still just 30 degrees. Legendary Do It Center is Glasgow's only locally owned hardware store, and that means a lot to me. Lessonberry's has been in business for over a hundred years. I walk in the store, they know who I am, and I get the help that I need. For me, Lessonberry's is the easiest place for me to shop, simply because it's a local, family-owned business, and I feel comfortable when I'm there. And I'm glad there's still a place like that in Glasgow I can go to. Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pettigo Lessonbury Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. At PBI. Nickel killed his parents, James and Arlene Nickel, at their home in Flat Gap, while Nickel then killed Lindsey Van Hoos and Patricia Van Hoos at an apartment near Painesville. That's where Nickel killed himself. 
The body of a woman is found behind a Knox County church Sunday morning. State police say the body was next to the river by Swan Pond at Baptist Church. The person is identified as Stacy Hobbs of Barberville. State police do not believe she died due to flooding in the area. An autopsy is being performed to determine the exact cause of death. Flooding brought on by heavy rains in parts of Kentucky have prompted a state of emergency in at least one southeast county. There is a report of an emergency declaration issued due to widespread flooding in Harlan County. No injuries were immediately reported. The National Weather Service says the Cumberland River at Baxter was about six feet above flood stage early Sunday and was expected to fall below flood stage last night. Governor Bevan says work to pass a means of paying down the pension debt is underway in Frankfurt, but at this point it's not ready for legislative consideration. He tells WLKY modifications are being made to the draft plan. The draft is essentially what was proposed last October. There are modifications being made as it relates to certain things like the 3% required of people for contribution to health care and things of this sort. Bevan knows there is a feeling of urgency to get this done, but says as it wouldn't take effect until July. I'm at Huckleberry. This is the Kentucky News Network. Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pettigo Lessonbury Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. At PBI Bank, we pride ourselves on providing great customer service with a hometown feel. We invite you to come in and meet our friendly staff who can help you apply for a mortgage, apply for an ag loan, open an account, or help with any other banking service. Trust PBI Bank to be your banking partner for personal or business accounts. Come visit or call us today. We are a Kentucky-based community bank serving the Commonwealth for more than a century. Stop in or visit online at pbibank.com to learn more about what we can offer you. Why the name Fire Pit Spirits? Because your beverage of choice is meant to be enjoyed with good friends, celebrating life, happiness, or just the end of a hard week of work. And, as always, it's meant to be consumed responsibly. So, whatever you're celebrating, gather around your fire pit, because good times are made with the ones you choose to keep in your circle. Fire Pit Spirits. Best selection. Best service. Best friends. Central Kentucky Monuments in Glasgow wants you to know that if you've recently lost a loved one or if you're thinking about a pre-need monument, they're here to make the process as stress-free as possible with plenty of examples and a multitude of custom options. South Central Kentucky Monuments has the ability to offer you exactly what you want or help steer you in the right direction based on your preferences. Let my friends David, Jerry, and Adam Jesse provide the service and craftsmanship you deserve. To learn more, visit SouthCentralKYMonuments.com. Good morning. It is 30 degrees at 623 from WCLU as we get our start today. We are looking for hopefully uh, a, a little bit warmer day. We're at 30 degrees right now, but staff meteorologist Ray Stajic says that we're going to be another one of those weeks where we wind up with uh, the potential for a thunderstorm about Thursday and maybe snow on Friday. So we'll, have, we'll check in with Ray here just in a few moments. In area funeral announcements this hour, Marcella Key, age 62, of Edmonton, died Sunday. At this hour, arrangements for Marcella Key are incomplete, but will be announced later by the McMurtry Funeral Home. Noma Fran Page, age 73, of Cave City, died Friday at the Medical Center of Bowling Green. She was a member of the Cave City Christian Church, where she ran the clothes closet, retired from Johnson Controls, and also loved to sing and fish. She is survived by her husband of 57 years, James E. Page, seven children, James Page Jr. and wife Faye of Horse Cave, Ricky Page and wife Faye of Bee Springs, Bobby Page, Angela Tisdale and husband James, Jennifer Ballard and husband Kelly, Ann Whittle and Nancy Class and husband Ronnie, all of Cave City. 
Two sisters, Linda Logston and Cherry Reinhardt, and husband Jerry. Four brothers, Arlie Page, Dean Page, and wife Barbara, Paul Page and wife Edna, and Donald Page and wife Judy. Special friends, Kevin Spencer, J.B. and Barbara Spencer, James and Starla Dean, Barbara Dunkel and Bonnie DePoor. Fifteen grandchildren, nine great-grandchildren, and two step-great-grandchildren also survive. Funeral services for Noma Fran Page will be Wednesday at 2 o'clock at Wind Funeral Home. Burial will follow in the Cave City Cemetery. Visitation Tuesday from 2 until 8 at Wind Funeral Home and after 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Rosemary McCoy, age 74, of Glasgow, died Friday at her residence. She was a retired machine operator at Mallory's for over 30 years and a member of the Gethsemane Baptist Church. Survivors include her husband, Wayne McCoy, two daughters, Joy Cartwright and Serata Sneed, both of Glasgow, one son, Jason McCoy of Glasgow, four grandchildren, Katie Fields, Cheyenne Sneed, Hannah McCoy, and Dallin McCoy, all of Glasgow, two great-grandchildren, Emma Kate Fields and Colt Fields of Glasgow, three sisters, Lyra Kingry and Beth Harper of Glasgow, and Nina Corridor. Funeral services for Rose Mary McCoy will be held at 2 o'clock on Tuesday at the A.F. Crow and Son Funeral Home. Burials will be the Caney Fork Cemetery. Visitation today from 3 p.m. until time for service. Timothy L. Tim Bird, age 60, of Glasgow, died Saturday at DiversaCare of Glasgow. The Heisville native was a painter and a former longtime employee for Botts Construction. He loved hunting, outdoor sports, and Harleys. He is survived by a brother, Steve Bird, and wife, Sandy, of Glasgow. Two nephews, Justin and Jonathan Bird. Services for Timothy L. Tim Bird will be Wednesday at 2 o'clock at the A.F. Crow and Son Funeral Home. Burial is to be in the Heisville Cemetery. Visitation will be Tuesday from 5 until 8 at the funeral home and Wednesday morning until time for service. Alternate expressions of sympathy can be made in the form of contributions to the funeral home to assist with final expenses. Bradley C. Straub, age 52, of Bowling Green, died Saturday. The Princeton, Kentucky native was a son of the late John Straub and Betty Roland Straub, who survives. He was the owner of a lawn care service. Survivors include his son, Jonathan Straub, a sister, Susan Nally, a niece, Grace Nally, sister-in-law, Brenda Straub. There will be no services as cremation was chosen. Arrangements are by the Hardy and Son Funeral Home. Services for Jean Ashley Webb, 85, of Bee Spring, will be at 1 o'clock Tuesday at the Gravel Funeral Home. Burial will follow in the Midway Cemetery. Visitation begins today at 12 noon. Graveside service for Roy J. Calvert, Jr. will be held today at 1 o'clock at the Fountain Run Cemetery with interment to follow. Service for Anthony Wayne Jones, 76, of Park City, will be today at 2 o'clock at the A.F. Crow and Son Funeral Home. Burials to follow in the Glasgow Municipal Cemetery. Service for Janice Jan Turner, age 78, of Tompkinsville, will be today at 1 o'clock at the Oakley Tribble Funeral Home. Burial will follow in the Bethlehem Cemetery. Funeral services for Golda Pencil Walbert, age 93, of Glasgow, formerly of Rockcastle, will be at 1 o'clock today at the Dowell Martin Funeral Home, with burial to follow in the Ted Mink Family Cemetery. The A.F. Crow and Son Funeral Home is in charge of those arrangements. Obituary information is available 24 hours a day at WCLURadio.com. No login is necessary. We're always on call and we answer the call. We know that's what keeps our loyal customers coming back season after season, year after year. With so many vining for your business, improving our service is not just a good practice, it's a necessity. From our easy to navigate website to our easy to deal with service department, we work hard to make it easy for you to choose us. No one keeps you rolling like BR Tire on Lovers Lane in Bowling Green and West Main Street in Glasgow. Glasgow Prescription Center is the culmination of my husband's professional career. When he took over GPC, he didn't want to be just good. He'd already done that. He wanted to be great. And I think his patients would agree that he's done just that. Could he get by with a smaller staff? Sure. The gift shop, the flower shop, delivery people, a brand new facility, none of those things are required to have a pharmacy. But that's why it's not just a good pharmacy, it's a great one. I'm really excited to see what Robert is going to do next because I know he's going to put his heart into it. With you through life.
Well, good morning, everybody. It's 29 minutes after the 6 o'clock hour. We are waking up with 30 degrees. We'll check in with Ray in just a moment. Let's turn to local sports. High school basketball tonight. The Glasgow boys host Butler County for a varsity game only. This is going to be at Scotty Gym. It will begin at 6 o'clock. You can join Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, and Bruce Tribune live at 550 tonight on 1490 WCLU and online at playwclu.com. In another boys game tonight, South Warren welcomes Clinton County. And in girls action, Allen County Scottsville entertains Bowling Green. And that's a check of local sports. Tis the season at Hurt Auto Sales. Bo Growth begins with an idea. At the People's Bank, that idea is to give you the banking service you deserve. We carry out that idea in everything we do. In fact, it's become our motto, working for you. As that idea continues to grow, let us work for you at our new location, 1300 West Main Street, opening this summer. Let us be the place where your ideas begin, where you get the banking you deserve. Come grow with us. The People's Bank, working for you. Member FDIC, Inc. Housing Lender. You may already know about the EPB's Roundup program where you can round your electric bill up to the nearest dollar and that money goes to Community Relief to help those who are less fortunate pay their electric bill. You can now increase the charitable amount you add to your EPB bill to any amount you choose. One, two, five, ten dollars or even more. Say your electric bill is $94.14 and you want to round it up by five dollars. Your bill would actually be a hundred dollars. To make your change to your EPB bill, contact the Glasgow EPB. Good at uh, 631 now at WCLU. And time for us to uh, check in with Ray Stajic. We talked about the cool start to the day. Ray says uh, another roller coaster week for us around here. Winter weather advisories stay in place in some spots north and east for some leftover black ice this morning. Most of the precipitation now is pushing east of us. Cloud sunshine as we go on through the day. Temperatures mid-40s. Overnight tonight mainly clear, 30. Tuesday, a few clouds around with sunshine, milder, mid-50s. Then rain rolls in as we go through Tuesday night. Periods of light rain on Wednesday, low 60s. We could get into the low 70s on Thursday with a few thunderstorms. And then we'll get colder on Friday with rain possibly changing to snow. Highs in the mid-50s and falling temperatures. I'm meteorologist Ray Stigic, a weather channel on WCLU, your home for local. What about that? <laughs> Better write that down so you know how to, uh, which day to expect what. You certainly can't generalize with a weather forecast like that for sure, Ray. Let's look at the uh, current conditions. Barometers at 30.41. Over the weekend, this is the way the rain fell. We had, uh, let's see, an inch and a quarter of rain on Saturday. That's 1.2, well, actually 1.24 if you want to be uh, specific about it. And uh, then on Sunday, we had another 4,600s, 0.46. Added up together, it's uh, 1.70. And uh, Friday, when Ray said it was going to be between 1 and 2, uh, I'd say that's spot on. North winds at 11 miles an hour, 90% humidity. This morning, it's 30 degrees here at WCLU. Check your clock. Make sure it's ticking in the right direction as we are at uh, 633 now on WCLU. Coming back with... Check of the birthdays. Hi, I'm Fred Parrish here at Parrish Carpet in Glasgow, Kentucky. My parents started this business over 50 years ago, so we know flooring here at Parrish Carpet. We have a large showroom and a big selection in stock. We do custom binding and we do free estimates. We've served a lot of people in the 50 plus years and we'd like to thank each and every one of you 
So if you have a flooring need, come see us at Parish Carpet. All right, 30 degrees now, WCLU. Ralph, he brings you the birthday, so let me get over here and uh, get the little birthday uh, song up here so that we can sing along with our honorees that we have here. We've got a bunch of them that are called in here on this uh, 12th day of February. First of all, we want to say happy birthday today. Let me see here. I, got, I think i got a gongaree on here. Yes, I do. Sally Bunch. Sally Bunch is 40 today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sally. We have Jackson Farmer. Jackson's two. Carolyn Christensen with a birthday. It is Stephanie McClellan. Stephanie has a big birthday today along with Spencer My uh, Matthews. I don't know why it's the second time I've messed up Spencer's last name. Spencer Matthews, 29. <laughs> Matt Persley has a birthday. Danielle Lessonberry. Cynthia Berry has a birthday. It's also Debbie Turner. Peggy Harmon with a birthday today. Uh, one anniversary thus far on the list, but it's one that I cannot uh, blow here. It is uh, my wife and uh, my wife, Terry Lou, and I's 35th wedding anniversary today. Happy 35th anniversary to my uh, wife, Terry Lou. And where's room on the paper for more, many more? 651-914-9800-956-1023 and online at WCLURadio.com. We, re we are rewinding back on the archives coming up here in just a moment. You've all probably heard. TJ Regional Health offers a vast array of medical services in our community. The TJ Health Pavilion is home to over 35 family and specialty physicians, outpatient services center, the TJ Urgent Care, and the TJ Pavilion Pharmacy. The TJ Health Cave City Clinic is a walk-in medical care facility providing care seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Stop by and visit one of our locations today. Lessonberry Do It Center is Glasgow's only locally owned hardware store, and that means a lot to me. Lessonberry's has been in business for over a hundred years. I walk in the store, they know who I am, and I get the help that I need. For me, Lessonberry's is the easiest place for me to shop simply because it's a local family owned business, and I feel comfortable when I'm there. And I'm glad there's still a place like that. Let me tell you, uh, we uh, actually, Angela, I know that she's been talking about this, but I want to make sure that everybody knows the public is encouraged to participate in an open house from 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock this afternoon at Glasgow City Hall. This is for residents to provide input regarding how you want to improve your parks, recreation, and leisure opportunities. Now, the city's consultant, which is uh, Brandstetter Carroll Inc., is going to facilitate the open house, but the main discussion will be from the residents. This will be in an open house format so residents can arrive any time during the open house and stay as long as you want to. I need to come in here. Okay. So we've all said there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do around here. Right. Now is the time, people. Don't just Sorry. talk about it over coffee with your buddies. Take yourself downtown to City Hall and tell them. This is a very inviting sounding uh, meeting and the one that's going to be very, I guess, uh, informal yet to the point. Yes, but also as a disclaimer, this is not take all your baggage down there to City Hall. Uh -huh. you know, if you're mad about something else or you're yeah. like, no, that is this, tonight is not yeah, it. That's right. tonight, tonight is is the time to talk about the parks, rec, and entertainment opportunities. Yeah. Branch Tedder Carroll, it's a, it's a well-known firm. has done a lot of work for the city and they'll uh, certainly do a good job of facilitating this. And uh, so I'm glad you jumped in there. Yeah, you know, if you've got a pothole on your road, keep that to yourself t tonight. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it might be something to worry about, but not with the Parks and Recreation Department <laughs> right, just right. yet. Right, but, yeah, but again, seriously, folks, I mean, as, as they're, you know, as they're uh, making plans on what they're going to do, I mean, they need to hear from, you know, from the people. You know, if you want something, come down there and tell them. Well, let me do this. Let me, you just stay right where you are, because I want to be sure to get the archives on the air in proper form. And then we'll begin to put it in reverse, okay? All right. We'll look back 100 years. Joseph A. Wade Industrial Hardware Services is uh, one of our sponsors who makes this possible. And Joseph A. Wade certainly appreciates being a part of this community. And, boy, have they made a difference. Also, the Tony Hogan Health Clinic, uh, making sure that you have a good place to go and, uh, and stay healthy. 
because there's a lot of uh, funk out there. And I know that the Tony Hawk... <laughs> <laughs> Henry said there's a lot of funk out there. Yeah, I did. Uh, because that's, I mean, that's what you can say. You're not really interested in getting the name of it. You just want to get rid of it. There you go. And Tony Hogan Health Clinic can help you with that one for sure. One of the realities of old... Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pettigo Lessonbury Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. At PBI Bank, we pride ourselves on providing great customer service with a hometown feel. We invite you to come in and meet our friendly staff who can help you apply for a mortgage, apply for an ag loan, open an account, or help with any other banking service. Trust PBI Bank to be your banking partner for personal or business accounts. Come visit or call us today. We are a Kentucky-based community bank serving the Commonwealth for more than a century. Stop in or visit online at pbibank.com to learn more about what we can offer you. Here we are moving into the archives this morning. And before we get into the archives, I want to tell everybody, and we'll continue to push about this, big deal coming up this Saturday, the 17th. Angela, uh -huh. Lieutenant Colonel retired Donzel Moody is going to be speaking at the South Central Kentucky Cultural Center Saturday. It's an afternoon meeting, 1 o'clock. This is for Black History Month. He was born in Mississippi, and after 22 years of service in the military, he now lives in Bowling Green with his wife and their two sons. Mm -hmm. Also, Joe Trigg, our very own Joe Trigg, will Spoke be speaking to Joe yesterday. On, uh, on this, in this uh, program on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Both will share their experiences in the military. Isn't uh, Joe promise he's going to come in this week and kind of give us like a yeah. uh, a sneak peek? I think that will be very very helpful because yes. people, you know, there's a lot of great stories to tell and uh, a lot of uh, dedication having been given uh, in the military, and we want to learn more about that. For sure. Okay, now let me get on board the train here. First of all, let me tell you this: Ray okay. Green, excellent archivist, right? Who is uh, really good at putting all this together right made a note here that in uh, in 1918 to use ray's words slim pickings okay <laughs> says there's only two weeks of the republican and no times available here in 1918 of course this was uh much of the news back then was war related he said right. so we're just gonna we've got several items to tell you about in 1918 but i'm going to spread them out a little bit so we don't run out of gas early okay. okay is that all right with you sounds good to me now let's move on up here to 1928. This is an interesting story that uh, I would like to know more about. All right. But I'm going to tell you what I do know. The annual banquet of the Knights of Pythias was held at the Liberty Hotel Monday evening. The dining room was beautifully decorated in the KFP colors, blue, red, and yellow, mm -hmm. together with flags and shields of the order. Red roses formed the centerpieces. Now, here is the, uh, this is the bill of fare here. This is the program. Mr. Wynn Davis was the Toastmaster. The invocation was given by P.E. Satterfield. Radio, R.L. Lessonberry. Television, Brent Dickinson, Jr. Aeroplane, John Richardson. And the flapper, Frank Jones. Now, <laughs> the flapper. What is a what? Well, you know what a flapper is. Of course, it's sort of like a like a dress. Uh, a no, 20s? no. It's a, it's a, it was a it was a floozy. It was a, a 1920s floozy type person. So, but anyway, <laughs> it's it's like uh, what I'm trying to tell you is so that I don't. Right. These are these marks are in quotations. Actually, Ray uh, says uh, he's puzzled by the qu the quotation marks around uh, you know aeroplane with quotation marks and flapper with quotation marks. But nonetheless. Uh, these fellows, R.L. Lessonberry, Brent Dickinson, John Richardson, and Frank Jones, uh, were on the program, each, uh, I guess, uh, putting some type of information together in behalf of the Knights of Pythias. Now, the gentlemen were accompanied by the ladies, and covers were laid for 84. 
well. That's a lot of nights of p- Pythias. I mean, it sounds like it. I wonder right. how many flappers. I, well, I don't know. So you divide it by four. I don't, you know, there was a, well, Frank Jones seemed to have been in, t- in charge of the flappers. There you so go. I don't know. Somebody somewhere has got to know more about that. Yeah. Because it's, would, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's more of that in, story. Dig into that, all right? Okay, let's jump up here to 1938. And I, I have, I've seen very few, if any, stories like this in any local publication because it goes back to that separation of church and state thing that right. some people adhere to. But this was in the, in the, hold on, this was in the Glasgow Times in 1938. Ordination services for four new deacons will be held at the Glasgow Baptist Church on February the 16th. Those to be ordained are Terry L. Hatchett, D.B. Hodges, Albert Jewell Myers, and Leslie Redford. So, uh, you know, new deacons to be ordained, mm-hmm. and it was, a, it was a big item in the newspaper. There you go. In 1938, some and the four fine gentlemen right there being ordained, too, I must say. All right, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something odd here in 1938. Okay. Because uh, this is, uh, you being a, being a girl from Cave City, you mm-hmm. know Seaborn Elsie. Of course I know Seaborn Elsie. Well, he uh, wrote a column in the Barron County Progress. This column was in there in uh, 2008, mm-hmm. but it was the column of Way Back When by Seaborn Elsie okay. from 1938. Okay. So I thought we would get it in order here. Okay. Let's think about 1938 and Seaborn writes, 10 teams will compete in district basketball tournament to be held at Glasgow High School Gymnasium. That's a big district. Yes, definitely. Here's the teams. Cave City, Glasgow, Glasgow Junction, Edmonton, Summershade, Slick Rock, Austin Tracy, Center, and Temple Hill. Heistful and Finney have been suspended for using players over the age of 20. What? <laughs> That's one way to win the title and get eliminated. I'm the, yeah, there you go. So, uh, but anyway, back in 19 and uh, 38, they had, had a bunch of teams <laughs> right there. I wonder what the nicknames like the, you know, we know some of the teams would have nicknames, but nonetheless, I don't know Cheaters? What, no, 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 no. I mean, they're using people they're not supposed to. They're cheaters. Well, I mean, yeah, but that wouldn't be their team... That wouldn't be their mascot. I mean, so people I mean, called him. That's right. But it was Heisful and Finney who got suspended. Mm-hmm. Can't use those players over 20. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, big, you. Like Big Mama said, it's not what they call you. It's yeah, what you answer to. That's right. Seaborn LZ column there in the Barron County Progress. That was fun, too. All right. Let's see here. 19 and uh, this is 1948. Miss Sarah Rogers Kaufman, the bride-elect of Scott Wendell Moore, was honored by a miscellaneous shower given at the home of Mrs. James Rogers with Mrs. D.B. Hodges and Mrs. Howell Pettigo as the co-hostesses. Now, uh, we had another item in the news uh, less than a month ago about another uh, uh, event being given for Miss Sarah Rogers Kaufman uh, in her uh, prenuptial uh, uh, activities there. How about that? How about that? That was 1948. 1958, Dr. Daryl P. Harvey has been invited by the Department of Health to participate in the preliminary planning of the 1960 White House Conference on Children and Youth. He will attend the first meeting in Washington, D.C. on February the 19th. The conference is held every 10 years. This will be the sixth of such meets. Dr. Harvey's invitation in part reads, quote, because of your broad interest in the health of mothers and children, and because your contributions that you are making to it, we are inviting you to advise us on the next steps and to consider with us such subjects as scope and theme of the 1960 White House Conference. So it was pretty, uh, pretty nice that a rural mm-hmm. uh, clinician here gets to go to Washington and say, okay, y'all think it's this way, but I'm out here in the trenches, and this is the way it really there is. There you go. That was in 1958. All right. 1968. This, <laughs> I like this advertisement. Okay. It reads as follows. Kids of all ages go for hamburgers. 
Two for 25 cents at the Tasty Freeze on Columbia Avenue in Glasgow. Two for a quarter. Two for a quarter at the Tasty Freeze on Columbia Avenue. That was a, you know, it was a fun place to go. Of course, you wouldn't quit with two hamburgers. You'd have to have a large shake with there it, you too. Go. And Curly Q's. Curly Q's. That was 1968. I'm glad to... <laughs> I'm glad uh, Dr. Harvey didn't know about that when he went to Washington because he might have <laughs> included that in his report. There you go. Two for a quarter. 1978. This was in the infancy of the ambulance service around here. And it was reported this day in 1978 that a record number of ambulance runs were made in January by the Baron Metcalf Ambulance Service. Mike Swift told the board that the number was due to increased levels of illness and weather-related accidents. Well, yeah, I mean... Uh, that explains it. Well, people complain about having to pay for it, but if I dial 911, right. I'm going to want that ambulance to come. That's right. And, you know, it was, it was the beginning of, uh, uh, of greatness there when this ambulance service began. Back in 1978, though, it was in, like I said, it was in its in infancy. Mm -hmm. Uh, this day in 1988, uh, probably inspired by the new WKU Glasgow campus, but this day in 1988, it was announced that Lindsay Wilson will phase out their Glasgow Evening College classes over the next year. They opened in March of 1984. They're phasing it out. Phasing it out. In 88. WKU Glasgow, take it over. That's right. And finally, uh, this is uh, 1998, the story that Davy Greer this day was named the Volunteer of the Year by the Glasgow Barron County Chamber of Commerce. That was 20 years ago. 20 years. And I got to sit next to Miss Davy Greer this past year. She's, uh, she, she, she'll never quit giving. She cracks me up. I'm telling you, she's a definitely, right. definitely great lady. That's right. And just always fun to be around, mm -hmm. too. All right. I think I've done a lot of shuffling here. But I think that that's the archives for today. We've shared some interesting things. Mm -hmm. I got some birthdays to add if you got your pencil ready. I do. Let me play the archive music just so that I can have time to find the paper. There we go. Pencil's ready. Paper's nowhere to be found. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. We got uh, Eric Self is having a birthday. 41 years old today. Eric Self is yes. 41. Are we, is, it, is it approved that we can say 41? I mean, I said, it's on Facebook, so okay. I mean, yeah, surely. All right. Okay, all right. Go ahead. It's his fault. He put his birthday on there. Uh-huh. Donald Wright. Donald Wright. Jeremy Frazier's having a birthday. Okay. John Waller. Hang on. Jeremy Frazier. Mm-hmm. John Waller. And Barry Kessinger, also known as Gomez. <laughs> Barry Gomez Kessinger. Barry Gomez Kessinger's birthday is today. He's 54 years old. All right. Anybody out there that knows Barry knows he goes by Gomez. Gomez. Yeah. All right. I think it goes back to a time when he was, you know, years ago, he would go out and, and you know, claim that his name was uh, Cesar Gomez. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, that was probably. Uh, <laughs> that was a whole different life for him. Well, you know, the TV show, The Adams Family, that was the daddy's first name, Gomez. It was Gomez Adams. That's right. Maybe it's related. Maybe it is. Or maybe we're just dragging it out here. Or maybe he's just probably going, I can't believe she just said that. <laughs> we are, we have <laughs> maybe done. a little bit of both. We have done some archiving. We have. And we're going to do more tomorrow. We really appreciate everybody joining us. Thanks to, uh, thanks to all the hard work and all the digging. Thanks for Mr. Seymour Elsey letting us use that 1938 deal there. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just barely. Thanks to all the flappers. That's right. That's right. Have, you, have you Googled flapper yet? No. I'm, I'm surprised you haven't done that. <laughs> I'm going to Google it right now. That's right. You'll see. You'll, you'll Google it. You'll find a part to a commode. Oh, go, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but. Just check it out and let us know, okay? Oh, no, loose women, you're yeah. right. All right. Why the name Fire Pit Spirits? Because your beverage of choice is meant to be enjoyed with good friends, celebrating life, happiness, or just the end of a hard week of work. And, as always, it's meant to be consumed responsibly. So, whatever you're celebrating, gather around your fire pit, because good times are made with the ones you choose to keep in your circle. Fire Pit Spirits. Best selection, best service, best friends. Be our tire. We're always on call and we. Here and tell you that today we are patting on the back by special request Crystal Walker. Crystal Walker had a birthday, uh, let's see, it was yesterday, I think. And she was nominated to be good as gold. And here's what the nomination says. Uh, well, actually, what it says is is that uh, it's her birthday, 
And uh, her friend Ashanti uh, was the one who uh, nominated Crystal Walker to be good as gold. So if you happen to see Crystal Walker around town today, we'd really love it if you'd pat her on the back and tell her she's good as gold from WCLU and a little taste of Texas and happy belated birthday. And, of course, she'll be entered into the drawing for the delicious meal at Little Taste of Texas that we'll draw for on this Friday. 654. Why the name Fire Pit Spirits? Because your beverage of choice is meant to be enjoyed with good friends, celebrating life, happiness, or just the end of a hard week of work. And, as always, it's meant to be consumed responsibly. So, whatever you're celebrating, gather around your fire pit, because good times are made with the ones you choose to keep in your circle. Fire Pit Spirits. Best selection. Best service. Best friends. Be our tire. We're always on call, and we answer the call. We know that's what keeps our loyal customers coming back season after season, year after year. With so many vining for your business, improving our service is not just a good practice, it's a necessity. From our easy to navigate website to our easy to deal with service department, we work hard to make it easy for you to choose us. No one keeps you rolling like BR Tire. On Lovers Lane and Bowling. America, touching lives, securing futures. Securities offered through MWA Financial Services, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Modern Woodman of America. Weather from the WCLU Weather Center, brought to you by South Central Bank. South Central Bank is a locally owned bank that cares about you and in West Main Street in Glasgow. Glasgow Prescription Center is the culmination of my husband's professional career. When he took over GPC, he didn't want to be just good. He'd already done that. He wanted to be great. And I think his patients would agree that he's done just that. Could he get by with a smaller staff? Sure. The gift shop, the flower shop, delivery people, a brand new facility. None of those things are required to have a pharmacy, but that's why it's not just a good pharmacy. It's a great one. I'm really excited to see what Robert is going to do next because I know he left over icy patches with some black ice. I don't know that the clouds are mixed with sunshine today and up into the mid 40s. Overnight tonight, mainly clear down near 30 degrees. Partial clouds and sunshine tomorrow. Milder, mid 50s. Rain tomorrow night, periods of light rain on Wednesday. Wednesday, we go low 60s and maybe some thunderstorms on Thursday, highs low 70s. And Friday, we may see rain end as snow. Crazy weather pattern this week. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Ray Stigic on WCLU, your home for local. Thank you, Ray. We have recorded over the weekend, uh, let's see, an inch and seven tenths, 1.70. That's what we uh, mustered up here on Saturday and on Sunday. And uh, if you're out driving this morning, you may well run into a little bit of black ice after that much uh, precip over the weekend. Uh, but just be aware of that. You know, we, we, you can never be too careful when it comes to looking for black ice because you can't see it. You just kind of got to feel it, and uh, let's be safe about that this morning. 30 degrees, WCLU weather, a courtesy of South Central Bank. Town of Glasgow Building Supply, they have really been busy this winter. Growth begins with an idea. At the People's Bank, that idea is to give you the banking service you deserve. We carry out that idea in everything we do. In fact, it's become our motto, working for you. As that idea continues to grow, let us work for you at our new location, 1300 West Main Street, opening this summer. Let us be the place where your ideas begin, where you get the banking you deserve. Come grow with us, the People's Bank, working for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. You may already know about the EPB's Roundup program where you can round your electric bill up to the nearest dollar and that money goes to Community Relief to help those who are less fortunate pay their electric bill. You can now increase the charitable amount you add to your EPB bill to any amount you choose. One, two, five, ten dollars or even more. Say your electric bill is $94.14 and you want to round it up by five dollars. Your bill would actually be a hundred dollars. To make your change to your EPB bill, contact the Glasgow EPB.
Well, here we are at 659 WCLU. Good morning to you. We're just about ready to play trivia here. I want to make sure that I uh, have my ducks in a row before we get the trivia contest going. Let me make sure that I also tell you about Ms. Autumn Johnson Harden. Autumn Johnson Harden, a very nice young lady having a birthday today. And I think I told you it's Crystal Walker Day today. I'm pretty sure I did that. So, But we want to be sure and pat her on the back and tell her she's as good as gold from WCLU and a little taste of Texas. We've got site-based council meetings this week. Don't miss out on the one that your child uh, is uh, affected by for today. Caverna High School meeting at 3.30 in the school library. Barron County High School site-based council meets today at 3.45 at the Trojan Academy Media Center. Glasgow High School Site-Based Council meets Wednesday in front of the office of the high school. And uh, Highland Elementary Site-Based Council meets Thursday at 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon at the school. So that's just some opportunities to be involved uh, in your uh, child's uh, education. Now let's talk about this, a big deal coming up. You want to tell me something over there, do you? Yeah, we got a a little bit of a traffic report from uh, Terry Bunnell, who's a On the Natural Parkway, he's headed up to uh, Marion to the other two branches and uh-huh. said that there's an accident uh-huh. uh, s- on the southbound side of Natural Parkway right before you get to the Russell Spring or Russellville uh, exit right there on the Natural Parkway. And as he was on the way down yeah. uh, uh, on I-65 on the, uh, that would be southbound side mm-hmm. at the Corvette exit, um, there was a, a vehicle that actually slid off the road and up onto, uh, up onto a guardrail. So there could be some black guys out there that people are dealing with, you say? He said the uh, overpasses and stuff are, mm-hmm. are, are really sketchy, so just absolutely take an extra second or two and, and give yourself some time. Yeah, and you know that black ice, you can't, you can't see it. You can only, oh, at the best, feel it. Dangerous. So that's dangerous one right house. there by the Corvette Museum and the other one there at uh, the second exit on the Natchez Parkway where right. it meets up with 6880 going to Russellville, correct? Yep, that was uh, Terry Bunnell calling us and okay. uh, letting us know. Okay, well, I appreciate that information, Terry, and uh, you be careful, too, because we, we, we just want to get everybody where they got to be today. Thank you, Mark. 701, and uh, we are coming back with uh, trivia for this morning shortly. You may be a believer. Hi, I'm Fred Parrish here at Parrish Carpet in Glasgow, Kentucky. My parents started this business over 50 years ago, so we know flooring here at Parrish Carpet. We have a large showroom and a big selection in stock. We do custom binding and we do free estimates. We've served a lot of people in the 50 plus years and we'd like to thank each and every one of you. So if you have a flooring need, come see us at Parrish Carpet. TJ Regional Health offers a vast array of medical services in our community. The TJ Health Pavilion is home to over 35 family and specialty physicians, outpatient services center, the TJ Urgent Care, and the TJ Pavilion Pharmacy. The TJ Health Cave City Clinic is a walk-in medical care facility providing care seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Stop by and visit one of our locations today. Accounts excluded. Rate subject to change. Member FDIC. All right. I'm ready to play trivia because I know there's a lot of smart folks that tune into this program. And uh, let's find out. Uh, And uh, let's see here. I'm going to play the commercial here. Wait a minute. Hold off on that uh, question there, Mark. I want to play the commercial for Long John's A&W. And then I'll come back and ask the question. Because, you know, talk about winning. You're going to win from Long John's A&W, but you're going to win when you take advantage of this deal. Long John Silver's A&W All-American Foods in Glasgow has a huge deal for a limited time. Listen up. Not one, but two double cheeseburgers for $6. Now, these are two one-third pound double cheeseburgers for $6. What a deal. You can't find anything like that except at Long John's A&W on the Happy Valley Road in Glasgow. Two double cheeseburgers, one-third pound, $6. Wow. Long John's. And here I'm telling you, these folks who uh, get together and have a big time, they enjoy the burgers at the A&W side uh, cranks out, and when you can get two of those double cheeseburgers for $6, 
That's a low price for big value. Okay, now let's ask the trivia question today. Looking for a term. A term for a group of papers that contain detailed information about someone or something. If you've got a group of papers stacked up on your desk, contains uh, information about someone or something, what is that particular, uh, I guess, what's the term for that? 651-9149 or 800 956 one oh two three hello trivia. Dossier. Hey, that's it. Who's this speaking? This is Melanie Watson. Hey Melanie, how you doing? I'm doing just great, Henry. How are you? I'm fine. Now I you know, I wanted to throw it out there because it's been in the news a whole lot of late. Yes, it's this has. word dossier has been you know, it's not one of those uh, uh, words that we use in I guess uh, a whole lot of normal conversation. But boy the uh, the news agencies blew that word up. Yes, they have. Uh, and from, I've de- ventured to say a number of news agency reporters who had no clue what the word was. Perhaps not. But, uh, but now we know. A group of papers that contain detailed information about somebody or something is a dossier. And um, I'm, when I was doing the research for this, Melanie, it seems like that it's tied to a French word that actually means back. So you uh, actually looking back on somebody or something to get the information you need to move forward. Nonetheless, okay. that's what it is. It's a dossier. So if you, you know, if you come into work today and you see a bunch of papers stacked on the desk with your name on it, uh, well, I guess you might think that might make you nervous, but also <laughs> it's a dossier. It's okay. See my files. <laughs> there you go, Melanie. You've won from Long John's, Okay. Thanks, Henry. Have a, have a good day. Bye bye. You too. It's uh, Melanie Watson. That's right. You've heard that. Uh, heard that story. Hey, we had these. Uh, that's this is uh, the, the actually this had to do with the investigation of presidents, things of that nature. But uh, you have a big dossier, which is a whole bunch of research on uh, a particular person or a thing. Melanie wins trivia. It's something that I think you could win tomorrow if you'll come back and join us here on WCLU. And a great big thank you to our friends at Long John's A and W. Don't forget to go out there. You, uh, now, Melanie wins a fish and more, but there's so many ways to win when you go out there to Long John's. Win and save. Can't beat it. CBS News Update. President Trump unveils his plan to shore up the country's crumbling infrastructure today. CBS's Hannah Doba says paying for it could be an issue. Only $200 billion of the $1.5 trillion would come from direct federal spending. State and local governments are expected to pony up the rest. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have questioned where the money will come from. The plan also counts on the private sector to pick up some of the tab. There is other opposition as well. Environmentalists are sounding the alarm on the shortened permitting process. The Center for American Progress, a progressive public policy research organization, released a statement that says in part, quote, what Trump and his team have released is not an infrastructure plan. It's a scam to line the pockets of corporate polluters by gutting protections for our environment. The infrastructure plan, part of the president's budget, he'll unveil today. CBS News Update. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. This is WCLU Glasgow, WCLU FM Unfruitville, W two five three BN Glasgow. Services of Royce Radio Incorporated. Betty Turner of Glasgow. Legendary Do It Center is Glasgow's only locally owned hardware store, and that means a lot to me. Lessonberry's has been in business for over a hundred years. I walk in the store, they know who I am, and I get the help that I need. For me, Lessonberry's is the easiest place for me to shop, simply because it's a local, family-owned business, and I feel comfortable when I'm there. And I'm glad there's still a place like that in Glasgow I can go to. Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pettigo Lessonbury Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. At PBI Bank, we pride ourselves on providing great customer service with a hometown feel. We invite you to come in and meet our friendly staff who can help you apply for a mortgage, apply for an ag loan, open an account, 
or help with any other banking service. Trust PBI Bank to be your banking partner for personal or business accounts. Come visit or call us today. We are a Kentucky-based community bank serving the Commonwealth for more than a century. Stop in or visit online at pbibank.com to learn more about what we can offer you. Why the name Fire Pit Spirits? Because your beverage of choice is meant to be enjoyed with good friends, celebrating life, happiness, or just the end of a hard week of work. And, as always, it's meant to be consumed responsibly. So, whatever you're celebrating, gather around your fire pit, because good times are made with the ones you choose to keep in your circle. Fire Pit Spirits. Best selection. Best service. Best friends. Begin. Thirty degrees at WCLU. Ray Stacy says we're going to ride the roller coaster again here this week because we're going to have uh, some. Uh, we're going to warm up a little bit and maybe uh, to the point that we'll get a thunderstorm on Thursday before we have snow on Friday. So strap on the seat belts. We'll head in that direction. Let's go to the newsroom. Our next check of local news, and here is News Director Angela Briggs. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Henry. Elizabeth Town Community and Technical College will be on a one-hour delighted today, as will Western Kentucky University campuses in E-Town, Fort Knox, and EC3. They'll all operate again on a one-hour delay due to icy road conditions. A recent session of the Barron County Grand Juries returned several indictments. 61-year-old Karen Williams Fox, 53-year-old Joseph Congon, both of Glasgow, were each indicted on one count of receiving stolen property, $500 or more, but less than $10,000. Congon was indicted on two additional counts, possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. 46-year-old Christopher Burroughs of Glasgow was indicted on five counts, possession of a controlled substance, tampering with physical evidence, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, drug paraphernalia, and possession of marijuana. 46-year-old Alicia Bunch of Cave City was indicted on five counts, possession of a controlled substance, tampering with physical evidence, drug paraphernalia, resisting arrest, and DUI. 34-year-old Stephen Lashley Keen of Glasgow was indicted on seven counts, Possession of a controlled substance, drug paraphernalia, DUI, possession of marijuana, no license, open alcohol container in a motor vehicle, failure to produce insurance card bail was set at $2,500. 28-year-old Marissa Stutzman of Smith's Grove was indicted on three counts, possession of synthetic drugs, second or subsequent offense, drug paraphernalia, and public intoxication. Remember, an indictment's an accusation only, and all individuals should be considered as innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law. When no one claims ownership, then everyone is charged. Officer Corbin with Glasgow Police saw a red car pass him. He was off on the side of the road heading towards Walmart. And according to the citation, the driver was looking ahead with a dead stare. Hands appeared to be locked on the steering wheel, and the driver's seat appeared to be moved up too close towards the steering wheel. Based on Officer Corbin's training and experience, this is the behavior that indicates some type of illegal behavior, possibly DUI. He pulled out behind the 2007 Ford Focus, noticed the vehicle sway from the fog line to the center line three times, so he turned on his lights and made a traffic stop. The driver, 32-year-old Elizabeth Rayner of Glasgow, had her license but no proof of insurance. Officer Corbin noticed the smell of marijuana. When asked if there was anything illegal in the car, Rayner gave police a blunt. According to the citation, to ensure there were no other illegal drugs in the vehicle, the passengers were asked to get out. In the back floorboard, officers found a piece of a plastic baggie and a white crystal substance in the floorboard, which later field tested positive for meth. A glass pipe was found underneath the seat, so no one claimed ownership of the drugs or drug paraphernalia, so everyone in the vehicle was charged. 30-year-old Timothy Cloyd of Cave City, 30-year-old John Adwell of Smith's Grove, along with Rainer, were charged with possession of a controlled substance drug paraphernalia, and tampering with physical evidence. Rainer was additionally charged with careless driving, failure to produce insurance card, and possession of marijuana. Sergeant Jesse Barton assisted at the scene. All three were lodged in the Barron County Detention Center. And a new fire truck and moving forward with the needle exchange program. Two of the items on the agenda for tonight's Glasgow City Council meeting. After a meeting last week, the Public Safety Committee of the City Council will recommend to the full council that the city immediately buy a new fire truck for the Glasgow Fire Department. Mounting maintenance costs and aging inventory are among the reasons for the need for the truck. The availability of a demo truck from Ferrera, a company that custom builds fire trucks, will save the 300-plus day wait for a new one and will save thousands in cost. 
Already approved by the Barron Fiscal Court, the Glasgow City Council is expected to approve the measure of the needle exchange at tonight's meeting. Once approved by the council, the Barron River District Health Department will move forward with the program. You can watch tonight's live stream online at watchwclu.com and online at WCLU Radio's Facebook page beginning at 7 p.m. Right now it's 7.14 a.m. on this Monday morning and even 30 degrees. Be our tire. We're always on call and we answer the call. We know that's what keeps our loyal customers coming back season after season, year after year. With so many vining for your business, improving our service is not just a good practice, it's a necessity. From our easy to navigate website to our easy to deal with service department, we work hard to make it easy for you to choose us. No one keeps you rolling like BR Tire on Lovers Lane in Bowling Green and West Main Street in Glasgow. The Glasgow Prescription Center is the culmination of my husband's professional career. When he took over GPC, he didn't want to be just good. He'd already done that. He wanted to be great. And I think his patients would agree that he's done just that. Could he get by with a smaller staff? Sure. The gift shop, the flower shop, delivery people, a brand new facility. None of those things are required to have a pharmacy, but that's why it's not just a good pharmacy. It's a great one. I'm really excited to see what Robert is going to do next because I know he's going to put his heart into it. Growth begins with an idea. At the People's Bank, that idea is to give you the banking service you deserve. We carry out that idea in everything we do. In fact, it's become our motto, working for you. As that idea continues to grow, let us work for you at our new location, 1300 West Main Street, opening this summer. Let us be the place where your ideas begin, where you get the banking you deserve. Come grow with us, the People's Bank, working for you. Member FDIC, Inc. Housing Lender. You may already know about the EPB's Roundup program where you can round your electric bill up to the nearest dollar and that money goes to Community Relief to help those who are less fortunate pay their electric bill. You can now increase the charitable amount you add to your EPB bill to any amount you choose. One, two, five, ten dollars or even more. Say your electric bill is $94.14 and you want to round it up by five dollars. Your bill would actually be a hundred dollars. To make your change to your EPB bill, contact the Glasgow EPB. In more local news, you've been looking for some bison to buy? Well, you're in luck. The Kentucky Department of Parks is accepting bids on six bison at the Big Bone Lick State Park in Union, Kentucky. The bison are being sold in three groups of two. The department's accepting sealed bids on the lots through noon, February the 19th. For questions or if you want to see the bison, you can contact Paul Simpson at the park, 859-384-3522. Or you can email paul.simpson at ky.gov. Now, bids must include your name, address, and a daytime telephone number. A $100 deposit is required with all bids. The deposit will be returned to all non-winning bidders. Checks should be made out to Big Bone Lick State Historic Site. You can send those bids to the Kentucky Department of Parks. Bison Sealed Bid, care of John Ballard, 2 Hudson Hollow, Unit 1, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40601. Miller Slaughter, a management consultant with the Small Business Development Center at Western Kentucky University, will be at the Glasgow Barron County Chamber Tuesday, February the 20th from 10 to 2, providing free small business consultations. The mission of the SBDC is to provide confidential one-on-one -on -one counseling at no charge for area business owners and those desiring to start a small business. Now, the WKU Small Business Development Center is committed to helping small business and entrepreneurs in the area. For the past 30 years, the highly trained staff has been a assisting small businesses in South Central Kentucky with starting, financing, and growing their business. All of their services are free, confidential, and professional. Please call the Chamber Office 651-3161 to make your appointment for the free consultation. A bill aimed at strengthening the Americans with Disabilities Act may not be what it seems. The U.S. House could vote this week on the ADA Education Reform Act of 2017, H.R. 620, which would give businesses accused of not complying with the law a grace period to fix alleged infractions on their properties before they are subject to litigation. Proponents claim it will curb frivolous lawsuits. But Marilyn Golden with the Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund argues most lawsuits filed under the ADA are not about money, but instead well-intentioned efforts to make buildings more accessible. If this bill passed, it would be very, very damaging for the civil rights of people with disabilities. It would mean businesses 
had no incentive to comply voluntarily with the law. Businesses could just take a wait-and-see attitude. ADA enforcement essentially relies on people with disabilities challenging violations. Golden says the legislation would complicate the complaint process, greatly lengthen the time it takes to bring a business into compliance. The House could vote on the bill as early as Wednesday. Now, the ADA has been a law for 28 years, which Golden says means businesses have had ample time to understand the law's requirements and to comply. She contends it's not an onerous process. Right in the law, it says it means easily accomplishable and able to be carried out without much difficulty or expense. So whatever is cheap and easy for them, in a sense. She adds that while it's an issue that may not impact people without disabilities now, it very well could in the future. As our average age gets older, more and more people will be hampered or excluded by the barriers in buildings that just may be left in place because of this bill. Opponents also note the bill was not crafted with the consultation of the disability rights community. For WCLU Local News, I'm Angela Briggs. 719 AM still stuck at 30 degrees. And more uh, calls from uh, folks out on the roadway to tell us about uh, some problems travel-wise. I got a uh, text just a minute ago from Mr. Tim Garrett. Tim says that uh, he wants to advise everybody to use caution this morning on the bridges and overpasses going to Bowling Green and rounding the big curve that connects the parkway to I-65. There's some black ice there. Now, Tim says it's not real bad, but it can catch you off guard if you're not careful. That's kind of uh, what we've been saying, and you can uh, certainly uh, take the words of advice there from Tim Garrett and others who have called to let us know that uh, it's difficult travel-wise out there today with the black ice on the roadway. So factor that into your morning. From the Kentucky News Network, I'm Ed Huckleberry. Floodwaters are wreaking havoc in eastern Kentucky following heavy rains this weekend. States of emergency have been declared in Harlan, Letcher, and Perry counties, and the city of Pineville is prepared to close its floodgates as the Cumberland River continued to rise Sunday. Mayor Scott Maiden tells WYMT. We are sitting at about uh, 1,008 or 1,019 feet which is, you know, uh, we're actually two-tenths of an inch below that, and that's where we close our gate at, at 1,019. The gates have never been closed since they were installed in 1989. In Perry County, there are reports of several people trapped in a home surrounded by floodwaters in the Bonnyman community. They were rescued by first responders. State police say a gunman killed his parents, his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's mother in a weekend shooting spree in Johnson County. State Trooper William Petrie says Joseph Nichols' parents, James and Arlene, were gunned down at a home in the Flat Gap area. He says Joseph Nichols' girlfriend, Lindsey Van Hoos, and her mother, Patricia, later were fatally shot at an apartment nearby, uh, nearby Paintsville. Joseph Nichols' body was found at the apartment in what authorities said was a murder-suicide. The largest school district in the state now has a permanent superintendent. The Jefferson County Board of Education has hired acting superintendent Marty Polio to lead the district following a special board meeting on Sunday. He's been working as the acting superintendent since former superintendent Donna Hargens resigned last July. And I've learned a lot in being a superintendent in seven months. And so in, in ways it seems like it was just yesterday, but in many ways it seems like a long time ago and we've gone through a lot um, since that time. Dr. Polio has worked for the Jefferson County Public Schools for 20 years. I'm at Huckleberry. This is the Kentucky News Network. Hi, I'm Fred Parrish here at Parrish Carpet in Glasgow, Kentucky. My parents started this business over 50 years ago, so we know flooring here at Parrish Carpet. We have a large showroom and a big selection in stock. We do custom binding and we do free estimates. We've served a lot of people in the 50 plus years and we'd like to thank each and every one of you 
So if you have a flooring need, come see us at Parish Carpet. TJ Regional Health offers a vast array of medical services in our community. The TJ Health Pavilion is home to over 35 family and specialty physicians, outpatient services center, the TJ Urgent Care, and the TJ Pavilion Pharmacy. The TJ Health Cave City Clinic is a walk-in medical care facility providing care seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Stop by and visit one of our locations today. Legendary do Seven twenty-four. Getting some more reports of some treacherous travel out there this morning. Let me summarize that for you right after we hear from Ray Stajic talking about the way that the uh, weather is going to be shaping up for the rest of the week. Colder air settling in. Still some winter weather advisories to our east for some maybe leftover icy patches with some black ice. I don't know that the clouds are mixed with sunshine today and up into the mid forties overnight tonight. Mainly clear down near thirty degrees. Partial clouds and sunshine tomorrow. Milder, mid-50s. Rain tomorrow night, periods of light rain on Wednesday. Wednesday we go low 60s and maybe some thunderstorms on Thursday. Highs low 70s. And Friday we may see rain end as snow. Crazy weather pattern this week. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Ray Stigic on WCLU, your home for local. Sounds crazy. Now, Ray, we're at 30 degrees, and uh, we've had a number of folks who have called in and said, be careful, you know, uh, as uh, Tim Garrett was saying, you come around that big curve there. Uh, where the uh, Louisville and Cumberland Parkway merges onto I-65, a little bit slippery there, and it's slippery as you come on down the interstate. And uh, we had uh, calls uh, from uh, like Terry Bunnell out in front of the uh, the uh, Corvette Museum, as well as there at the second exit on the Natcher, getting off on 6880 there at uh, uh, at uh, on the uh, west on the northbound rather Natcher. So be aware of that. Factor that into your commute. Give yourself a few extra moments to get where you're going to be. 725, 30 degrees at WCLU. Over the weekend we had, uh, see, an inch and seven tenths, 1.70. Citizens First has a great center is Glasgow's only locally owned hardware store, and that means a lot to me. Lessonberry's has been in business for over a hundred years. I walk in the store, they know who I am, and I get the help that I need. For me, Lessonberry's is the easiest place for me to shop, simply because it's a local family-owned business, and I feel comfortable when I'm there. And I'm glad there's still a place like that in Glasgow I can go to. Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. Birthday is here just a moment. Ralphie's Fun Center. Ralphie's always has something fun going on. What about that Fat Saturday parade? What about the wonderful parties they throw? You can kind of get a feel that things are very professional, very well done, and uh, very well thought out at Ralphie's Fun Center. So let's get ready to have some more fun. We've got a lot of folks having birthdays. Maybe you want a birthday party. Maybe you see a big old place to have a big old bunch of people. Well, Ralphie's does that quite well. Also, we're talking Ralphie's Fun Center. Let me see if I can uh, get us caught up here on some birthdays today. How about David Hawkins? David Hawkins with a birthday. Autumn Johnson Harden is celebrating. Barry Kessinger is 54. Barry, also known as Gomez Kessinger, is 54. John Waller. Jeremy Frazier. It's Donald Wright's birthday today. Eric Self is 41. Carol, Carolyn Christensen. That's Carolyn Christensen.
Bank. That idea is to give you the banking service you deserve. We carry out that idea in everything we do. In fact, it's become our motto, working for you. As that idea continues to grow, let us work for you at our new location, 1300 West Main Street, opening this summer. Let us be the place where your ideas begin, where you get the banking you deserve. Come grow with us, the People's Bank, working for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. You may already know, friends. It seems as there are a great many people who equate one's politics with one's worth. I'm distressed that many who claim to be Christians are showing contempt for those of an opposing political view. In fact, I find it hard to understand how true followers of Christ can become so wrapped up in political philosophies, candidates, and parties that it seems to be the major focus of pride for them. At John 18:36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. There can be no other meaning attached to this statement except to say that the kingdom of God has nothing to do with with the governmental kingdoms of this world except peaceful coexistence, if possible. The number one focus of God's people must not and cannot become twisted so that it places a primary importance upon political matters. When Jesus stated at Matthew 6.33 that we must seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, he placed the focus of all disciples where we must keep it. When those who claim to be disciples make political leanings a measure of friendship or worse, a measure of real Christianity, they sever themselves from the nature of Christ. For those who make no claim to Christianity, or at least to the value of respecting human dignity, I suppose such would not be surprising. But in such a case as that, when one does not seek first the kingdom of God, it is certain they will not find it. For This is Danny Wyatt for the Refuge Church of Christ. Long John ETV's Silver's A-W-O Roundup A-W-O Program, where you can round stuff. your electric bill up to the nearest dollar, and that money goes to Community Relief to help those who are less fortunate pay their electric bill. You can now increase the charitable amount you add to your EPB bill to any amount you choose, one, two, five, ten dollars or even more. Say your electric bill is $94.14 and you want to round it up by $5. Your bill would actually be $100. To make your change to your EPB bill, contact the Glasgow EPB. All right, around the world and up the street, what it is is it's Tidbit News. So How's it going today, this morning? Wes is joining me in the uh, newsroom here. We we got a lot of folks capable of helping out with Tidbit News around here. Yeah. And I see, Mark, but we wouldn't be on TV if Mark wasn't running the controls up there. So that's a fair Mark's way. looking sharp this morning. He is. He's got a tie on. Yeah, I think he's got a camera up there that we can put him. Can you put, his, can you put yourself on TV up there, Mark? I don't know. He's I can't. <laughs> He's got a camera, but not a microphone. So he makes me look bad. Well, I mean, you know, because like I'm here in my, you know, well, I, you know how I am. I'm casual. Yeah. But um, you know, Mark's the young. He's the new. He's actually older than me, but he's he's the new whippersnapper. And well, uh, so, you know, I there. See, there it is. Dressed to impress. That's right. There he is. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you you know, as uh, as I've told you before, and he's got all that hair too. Yeah. If, if he works here much longer, he's going to see a receding hairline. Yeah. It happens to everybody that works here. That's exactly right. <laughs> it do happen. <laughs> all right. What you got see. for me? Uh, well, let's see here. This one. Uh, yeah, I've already it, got that. Uh, I've already got that hairline there, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> the receding hairline. Oh, a little bit. I think it just runs in the family. Yeah. It's just a recession, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Gotcha. It's yeah. It's it just does run the family, though, so I hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. I, I had some interesting tidbits right here, but I want to make sure that I got them in the right order. Okay. Okay. This is some interesting research. Engineers at Xerox have made a bold claim for their skills at unclogging printer jams. Okay. Their expertise was responsible for a drop in Chicago's crime rate during the mid '90s. Okay. It, now, I'm intrigued. Follow along here. <laughs> I'm trying. Let's unclog the printer, and the crime rate will go down. I, st- yeah, how does that happen? The story of how they unclogged the city's broken criminal justice system is uh, told at the latest edition of The New Yorker. A spokeswoman for the copier company said it was not just a throwaway line, but that the engineers stood by their extraordinary claim. It'll be a weirfully, a weirdly familiar scenario that just about everybody with a pressing deadline who has found themselves up to their elbows in toner, frantically trying to pull a scrunched up piece of paper from stubborn rollers. 
John Via Vitani, the head of Xerox Media Technology Center, told the magazine, I was asked to go to Chicago to visit the Chicago Children's Court. This was the mid-90s, and a sales rep had put our printers, over 400, over the court system. What was happening was lawyers had to deliver certain court documents to the defense attorneys within a certain amount of time. Otherwise, the defendant was let go. Mm -hmm. They were losing two out of the three cases because of paper jams. Mm -hmm. As he told the story, he paused for emphasis. Two out of three defendants were gone just walking out the door because of paper jams. But since they got better at unclogging them, you see, more defendants were able to be tried. Yeah. And the crime rate went down. Because they were incarcerated. That's right, and not uh, not duplicated, so to speak. <laughs> that, I've heard it all. I mean, yeah. that's the most random story it, you know, if I you're think lucky, I've ever heard. You know, there's some luck for you. Sorry. Yeah, I got out of court because of the paper jam. My lucky day, the copier jammed. <laughs> <laughs> Why ain't you in jail now? A lot of folks don't think of that as being a lucky day <laughs> when your paper jams. Well, certainly a model you can uh, copy. This story right here out of, uh, well, actually it's out of space. There's no dateline <laughs> date right here, but uh, this is interesting. It comes about during the Olympics. Russian cosmonauts. And astronauts from the United States and Japan played their first badminton match aboard the International Space Station mm -hmm. over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, for the first time, the ISS became a venue for sports. Athletes from Russia, the U.S., and Japan competed in orbital badminton tournament. How does the little birdie behave in orbit? Uh, I would like to know. Do they have video footage of that? You well, think? I mean, I'm sure they probably do. Uh, in the first game, Russian cosmonaut Alexander Misurkin and Anton Shklaklarov mm -hmm. played against NASA astronauts Mark Vandy High and the only Japanese, Jack's uh, astronaut Norsiji Kanai. Mm -hmm. In the second game, American Joseph Akaba replaced his compatriot Vandy High. Mm -hmm. What language am I speaking in? I don't know. Russian cosmonauts began a seven-hour spacewalk from the ISS. Uh, and anyway... Uh, it says here that the officials... Seven-hour right. spacewalk? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like being out on the front porch the whole workday. Yeah. <laughs> According to the official website of the National Badminton Federation of Russia, matches were played in men's doubles, but according to the specific space rules, the score in the first outer space match was not recorded. Uh, mm -hmm. It's interesting to know that in, this, in space, the first match doesn't matter. I don't guess it does. Well, you know, but it's, you know, unless it's one giant step for man. Uh, they've got to uh, count got, that one. Sounds like the uh, the Americans have talent that's out of this world. That's right. I'd like to see that video of how the badminton birdie uh, behaves. I would too. And this is a story that I got to make sure I, I got to. Would, wouldn't it be like in slow mo? Wouldn't you think? Well, it'd be slow mo, all right. Be, the birdie wouldn't travel any any known trajectory of of badminton on earth it would just go wherever yeah and when it bounced somewhere you still couldn't tell where it was going you don't have that gravitational uh pull to behave with well you've had one story out of left field and one story from another planet so. that's right so this one you can decide where this one is <laughs> everybody's calling us here let me see if i can put some folks on hold so that we don't think people don't think we went home because we really hadn't got started good that's right all right, here's the headline. I found this on the Newswire. Nokia mobile phone survives being thrown at a police car. People still have those? A man has been jailed for six weeks after he threw a mobile phone at a police car. So officials were traveling on Derby Street. i got to find a dateline on this story right here. It's a flip phone, I'm sure. Uh, it's, uh, let's see here. This Anyway, it was uh, on Derby Street. Uh, in some country, I'll find out in a minute here, they pulled over and arrested 20-year-old Stephen Quinn. He was charged with attempted criminal damage. The police car was not damaged when it hit, and the Nokia mobile phone was also still working and in one piece when recovered by the officers. Police said the motive behind throwing the phone still largely unknown. <laughs> Quinn of uh, parking Statham Avenue, that's got to be England. Statham Avenue in Warrington appeared at the Bolton Magistrates Court the same day, was sentenced to three weeks in prison for the offense. He was handed a further three weeks in prison because the offense was committed whilst he was subject 
to a suspended sentence. Quinn was already serving a suspended sentence after he appeared before the North Cheshire Magistrates Court in November when he was convicted of obstructing a police constable, assaulting a police constable, two counts of criminal damage and a public order offense. This guy the, does not like no, law enforcement. And the word offense in all these stories is spelled with a C. No S in the word offense mm -hmm. in England. Anyway, this guy is, uh, he's got a problem with policemen. So, he's got you know, a problem with anger management. That's right. So he, I imagine the police, let me throw my phone at your police car. <laughs> he was going to throw whatever he can get, get a hold of. <laughs> Golly. So, that, that's awful. It is bad. So, you know, that's what we have. There. But, you know, hey, uh, I guess that... Uh, I don't know that Nokia could make an advertisement out of that, but nonetheless, it would. There's some good things to say about it. Mm -hmm. Just don't try it at home. Look at your screen. Tidbit, huh? Your screen. My screen. Yeah, I got the. Uh, oh, you got the badminton I got story. The, I got the, yeah. Okay, now Marcus found some badminton. Well, uh, I'm trying to watch it on Facebook Live, but it it says broadcast interrupted, so I don't know. Could what? just it could be because I'm an admin on the account. Yeah. I don't know. Well, anyway, there, I think it's fixing to come up. There it is. There it is. It's on TV now. That's a, is that badminton? Those, are, those aren't the birdies I'm used to playing with in badminton there, Mark. Because you play so much. That's right. I mean, right. About, every, about every Thursday, right? I don't think I could smack that birdie with a racket. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to come back we, there and look at we'll it. We'll see how... Uh, We'll see how feathers fly. Well, that's the closest I can find is right. the pigeons. And, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you for what, looking. What is the I pigeons? don't think it's real close. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I'm the, not sure. The, is it actual badminton in space or are there, are there pigeons? I think they released some uh, pigeons. In, in space? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, in the, you know. All right right now we've got a floating the, dog. Anyway, y'all guys, y'all sort through that, okay? What about the Tesla in space? Yeah, I saw a, I saw a little meme on Facebook that says uh, actual footage of me uh, when I'm five minutes away, and it was the Tesla <laughs> <laughs> floating in outer space. I know some people like that. Yeah, they drive me crazy. Well, you know, I think they, he said he was going to drive it on Mars when when mm -hmm. he gets there. He'll be the first one. Yeah. Well, that's another tidbit news story in the future. All right. Yeah. But we do need to follow up on that and. Um, I don't know. Did you see any nude mice over the weekend? No, I didn't. Uh, but I had a lot of people say something to me about it. <laughs> that was that was my favorite tidbit moment ever. Yeah. Because because you just read it and didn't you didn't skip over it. You know. Yeah. It was funny. Well, you know, it's, you had to it's like as if these mice were supposed to have clothes on. That's exactly right. I, that, <laughs> that's that's like <laughs> that was great. That was like my favorite. Uh, I, I shouldn't get into all this, but anyway, everybody loves Raymond the other night. They, uh -huh. they were having a big argument between Marie and uh, Deborah's mother, and uh, Deborah's mother walked in, and Frank was in his boxers. Yeah. And Marie told him to get out of there, go to the laundry room, and get on a pair of pants. So Frank comes back with a pair of pants on, and it was really bad-looking, wore-out pants. Mm -hmm. And so Marie says, Frank, get out of here. You look like an animal in those pants. Get out of here. <laughs> And Frank's response was, animals don't like pants. <laughs> <laughs> animals don't even wear pants. I, yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. I loved it. Okay. Sounds That's enough like tidbit news for today. You heard the news. Hi, I'm Fred Parrish here at Parrish Carpet in Glasgow, Kentucky. My parents started this business over 50 years ago, so we know flooring here at Parrish Carpet. We have a large showroom and a big selection in stock. We do custom binding and we do free estimates. We've served a lot of people in the 50 plus years and we'd like to thank each and every one of you. So if you have a flooring need, come see us at Parrish Carpet. TJ Regional Health offers a vast array of medical services in our community. 
The TJ Health Pavilion is home to over 35 family and specialty physicians, outpatient services center, the TJ Urgent Care, and the TJ Pavilion Pharmacy. The TJ Health Cave City Clinic is a walk-in medical care facility providing care seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Stop by and visit one of our locations today. And looking forward to many more. Well, we've got uh, calls coming in here from listeners talking about it snowing. For example, it's snowing on, uh, I believe she said Columbia Avenue. And we've had some other calls, from folks, saying it's, you know, it's snowing. So we here we were thinking if we could just escape the black ice, we wouldn't be in any trouble. Well, now we've got this little snow thing to, uh, to deal with. So we'll double check that. And maybe Mark will put the roof cam on the. Uh, TV here in a minute, and we can look out front and see if we got any snow downtown. What will you begin in 2000? Legendary Do It Center is Glasgow's only locally owned hardware store, and that means a lot to me. Lessonberry's has been in business for over a hundred years. I walk in the store, they know who I am, and I get the help that I need. For me, Lessonberry's is the easiest place for me to shop, simply because it's a local, family-owned business, and I feel comfortable when I'm there. And I'm glad there's still a place like that in Glasgow I can go to. Who will be the future face of Pedigo Lessonberry? Through expert analysis, we've confirmed their potential. With intense training, we've prepared them for any occurrence. We've taken their strengths and made them stronger. Now it's time to see what they're made of. Presenting the future face of ISU Pedigo Lessonberry Insurance. Hello, I'm Jared Persley. And I'm Daniel Bird. And we're more than prepared to serve you here at ISU Pettigo Lessonbury Insurance. Growing with a proud community since 1902. At PBI Bank, we pride ourselves on providing great customer service with a hometown feel. We invite you to come in and meet our friendly staff who can help you apply for a mortgage, apply for an ag loan, open an account, or help with any other banking service. Trust PBI Bank to be your banking partner for personal or business accounts. Come visit or call us today. We are a Kentucky-based community bank serving the Commonwealth for more than a century. Stop in or visit online at pbibank.com to learn more. All right, got my friend Terry Hagan on the phone right here. Terry Hagan, uh, a sales aficionado at uh, Bailey Gibson Buick GMC in Glasgow. Now, Terry is the guy that seems to get the scoop. Terry seems to get the very latest, the edge, if you will, on incentives that General Motors passing down for its customers. And, you know, they've, they have, they've learned from their experience that folks do enjoy incentives. And Terry Hagan's going to give us a wee bit of a hint about it this morning. Hey, Terry, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about you, Terry? I'm real good. Just enjoying the beauty of the day, sir. That's good. Good. I want to hear because you know we had we were having a conversation back about a week or so ago trying to you know figure out what uh, what GM might be doing for this month and lo and behold I think you told me maybe they have some incentives on some models they haven't had incentives on before is that true? That is true. Some that we haven't and some that we have. Okay. Well, I want to hear. Well, I've got the remainder of this month. 18%. Yeah, you heard me right. 18% off of all envisions, which is huge. Mm -hmm. I've got 15%. Now get this. 15% off of all GMC Acadia's 2018 models. Now, see, that's what I was going to say. That's what I heard. I've never, since we've been doing this little, uh, you know, update, You've never used the word Acadia when it comes to incentive, but now you have. No. Yes, sir. I got 15% off on my 2018 Acadia. Uh -huh. As I said, I've got that little SUV. It's a very nice ride. Mm -hmm. I've got 18% off on my Buick Envision. Mm -hmm. I've got supplier pricing uh, on my you Sierra Pickups, SLT. Do you want to explain what supplier pricing uh, actually uh, means? Well, that means you're buying it 
cheaper than you would buy it if you pulled on the lot because you get the GM uh, incentive, like if you uh, work at a manufacturer that uh, sells pilot to GM, mm-hmm. uh, like parts, brakes, things like that. So you get a, a extra big discount for that. You also, and that's not only on your SLT Sierra crew cabs, that is on your Yukons and your Yukon XLs. But it's another word you don't hear much under the incentive uh, head, header either, is Yukon. No, normally it, it doesn't, but I've got them on it, and uh, also uh, on our, uh, our um, GMC Canyons, mm-hmm. I've got $2,000 trading uh, assistance on that, so if you're trading in a 99 or newer GM product, uh, or 99 or newer vehicle, uh, you're going to get an additional $2,000 off on candy. Wow. So there's just, you know, I was uh, I was sort of waiting for you to get caught up, and lo and behold, I was the one that needed to get caught up, Terry. <laughs> well, and I'm not done. Let me tell you, I've got two more good, good incentives. Let's hear it. I have got on my Buick Regals, which is a mid-size car, very sporty, sharp, loaded up, or plain, however how you prefer it. Mm-hmm. I've got them with up to up to seven thousand dollars off. Up to seven thousand dollars off, son. Yes, yes. And my Buick uh, Lacrosse. Mm-hmm. I've got up to six thousand dollars off on those as well. Well, what we got to do is we've got to get people in the door out there before uh, before the. This is. I'm afraid the inventory is going to run out before the incentives run out. Well, let's hope so. Because y- y'all y- y'all don't have that at your fingertips every single day for sure. Well, we do not, and I and I can't stress enough how huge this is. If you're in the market for a, a vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, also with that being said. This is a perfect time to get that sweetheart her Valentine present. All right. What a nice way to say Happy Valentine's Day than to hand over yeah. the keys to something that's absolutely, positively, uh, something that uh, she may well want. Yes, sir. And at a huge saving. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, so. As my daddy used to say, you can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Save the money, get the deal, and please the sweetheart. Well, it sounds to me like that folks need to be planning uh, a mission to Bailey Gibson today because these incentives, you know, uh, won't last long, nor will the inventory at these prices, too, Terry. All right? Uh, I, yes, sir. And please, if you can't come on down and see Terry Hagen at Bailey Gibson at GMC, yeah. look at some of these fine automobiles that we've got. Yeah. We'll be glad to show them to you, let you drive them, anything you want to, and as always, hassle-free. Terry, have a good day, sir, and I hope you got a busy day going out there, too, all right? Thank you. See Thank you me. later. Bye. See you. Terry Hagan. Terry Hagan at Bailey Gibson Buick GMC. Boy, they got some stuff for you out there. Incentives. GM has approved it. They've rubber-stamped it, and you can be the proud owner of, uh, like, well, like what he was saying, these are uh, special deals on 2018 Acadias. I'd get out there and ask questions today. Do you know what the perfect time of year is to get caught up in servicing? What we can offer you. Why the name Fire Pit Spirits? Because your beverage of choice is meant to be enjoyed with good friends, celebrating life, happiness, or just the end of a hard week of work. And, as always, it's meant to be consumed responsibly. So, whatever you're celebrating, gather around your fire pit, because good times are made with the ones you choose to keep in your circle. Fire Pit Spirits. Best selection. Best service. Best friends. Coming up, the news you depend on is the live and local 8 o'clock morning edition here at WCLU. Angela Briggs. Angela Briggs. <laughs> Let me say her name if I can. Angela Briggs will report the very latest in local news coming your way at the top of the hour here in WCLU. Thanks for helping us to get uh, Monday started off in a reasonable fashion here on WCLU. We'll try again tomorrow. (laughs) 